Welcome back to Begborough Steel, where we have grave news to report. Whilst we've been busy trying to improve our youth facilities, our rivals from across the city have snuck into our youth academy and stolen one of our top prospects, Eloy Tomas, had the potential to be a one-star player. And we will never get to see him run out in an Europa shirt. This is war. But vengeance will have to wait for another day, because today, we're making our European debut. Before we get into that European game, a couple more bits of housekeeping first. We've got some more bad news, I'm afraid. We were meant to be kicking off this season in a brand new 15,000 capacity stadium. But we've had a delay, I'm afraid. We're now not going to get the keys to the new gaff until the 4th of October, which means our first few league games as well as our first European games are going to be played at somebody else's stadium, far from ideal, I think you will agree. But we do have some good news. In our last episode, we brought you up to date on all of our improvements that we'd made to the playing squad. Improvements might be stretching it somewhat, but I think we've definitely made improvements when it comes to our behind-the-scenes staff because look at us now leading La Liga in almost all of the training categories that our coaches have. We just need to make a slight tweak to our goalkeeping distribution to try and overtake Real Madrid, and we would be the best resource team in terms of coaching in the entire Primera Division. We've still got drastic improvements to make when it comes to our scouting. And our physiotherapy is none too hot either. But little by little, we are building this club and improving it. And we've made a decent old start to the season as well. So we make our European debut this evening. But at the weekend, we kicked off the La Liga season as well. We were given an away tie at newly promoted Valladolid. And we were superb. I was a little bit worried, to be honest. We've had some injury problems. We'll show you those in a moment. And in pre-season, we'd not really clicked. Our new players were definitely settling in. Some of our star names had missed most of pre-season. We didn't look all too convincing. But in this game, from the off, we were purring. We beat Vardalid 5-0. We had 30 shots, 15 on target. Cordoba was missing, having been injured for much of pre-season. But his new understudy, Gustavo, came into the side, scored two goals, including a free kick, and got himself an assist. I think we can all agree he's not going to be setting La Liga alight with these kind of areas to his game. But in this encounter, he came in and looked superb. We had other good performances as well. Old John Jules came in and made Uncle Danny proud, scoring a goal and getting an assist on his debut. Do not worry, he did not play as a halfback. I noticed the mistake I'd made after about 90 seconds of the game and switched Pacheco and John Jules around. Our two Carrileros looked pretty good as well, both getting involved in the game. And the back four, a little bit patched up because we've not been able to bring Ikechukwu back. And we've also had an injury to Cory and Darba as well. But the understudies performed pretty well. Even want away goalkeeper Davide Barossi put in a performance, but he is one of a number of pretty unhappy players. So we will be making our European bow against Bromby away this evening. Bromby lost their first leg to St. Gallen at home, but went out to Switzerland 1 3 0 to set up the tie we're going to show you this evening. But we will be taking some particularly unhappy campers out to Denmark, led by Barossi, who's put in a transfer request, which I've refused. He is furious that his dream move to Real Madrid has been blocked. And to be brutally honest, you'd probably be the same as well. But Madrid came in with a bid of only about £4 million. His minimum fee release clause is £10 million. There's nothing I can do to try and up that further. He will not sign a new contract because he's so unhappy with the way we've treated him. Madrid seem to have called on their interest for him, but Sevilla are now hovering around in the background. Potentially they could make a bid because the transfer window is not closed yet. Maybe once the window is shut, all of this will settle down and we might be able to commit him 
to a new contract with a higher minimum fee release clause, but he is definitely a cause for concern, and there are others. Antonio Pacheco has become a key player for us because he's the only real player we have on our books that can play this half-back role. He could settle in as a centre-half if he could play there. He's reasonable in the air. He's got really good tackling. His marking is decent. His positioning is decent. He fits the half-back role better than any other player that we have. But before we started playing this formation, he had got unhappy about the lack of game time that he was receiving. We've promised to sell him if a bid for £240,000 comes in. If any team comes in with an offer like that, I think he's going to want away, even though, realistically, he's now playing for a club in Europe in a division way above what he's probably capable of playing but it's another little worry. We've got other unhappy campers. If we go down to the bench, Stein Spearings doesn't like the contract that he's on. But at 31 years old and as a backup player, I'm not keen to pay him the £18,000 a week that he is looking for. So that's a little bit of a worry. We've got players like Escobar who are unhappy that I'm not giving him a new contract, even though I've rewarded Escobar with one. He's on almost £20,000 a week now, and he's got another two-year deal despite being 30, just because he's realistically our first choice left back. We've got other players in and around the camp that are looking to move on. So we've not got the happiest of squads that we're taking out there. But to our tactic, in the Vidalid game, we played our traditional formation, the Samantha Mumba, with our wing backs on support and a positive mentality, and we looked rampant. But for tonight's game, I'm going to tone it down and use the Samantha Mumba 2.0, which was successful when we played Barcelona just four or five games before the end of last season. The only little tweaks are that the wing backs on support become full backs on support, and the mentality goes down to balanced. Because we're away in this tie and I don't want to be out of this tie already going into the second leg. If that means that we go out there and don't create too many chances and just grind out a draw, well, I think I will be comfortable with that. I'd like to think that we might be able to nick a goal or two out in Denmark and maybe make the second leg a formality. But I don't want to throw it away by being too gung-ho and being out of the tie before it's even got started. Some of our favourites are going to be on the bench for today. Cordoba, back from injury, got 15 minutes at the weekend, not fit enough to start today, and probably our first-choice centre-back, Jose Muller, has been struggling for fitness for weeks now, so we're going to be leaving him on the bench as well. Who knows how we'll be able to do in our first European tie? I guess the only way to find out is to kick off the game. Here we go then, we are in the Bromby Stadium and we've got the kickoff and our European campaign is underway. Will it last more than 90 minutes? Well, we're going to have to find out. The players played incredibly well about Viadolid. I am hopeful that in a European encounter, who knows how the chips are going to fall. If we perform well in this game, if we could get a comfortable victory to take back to Barcelona... Well, I might not come back for the second leg of this game if it looks like we are going to progress. But we'll have to make a call on that when we see how the match unfolds. We've got more big games right around the corner, by the way. We've only got a two-day gap before we are back playing Atletico Madrid in the league. That's going to be a tough game. And I think we're only going to have played four or five games this season before the derby with Barcelona is upon us as well. So we've got some big games on the horizon, as well as potentially trying to squeeze in more European fixtures as well. I'm glad I strengthened the squad, but there are still some parts to our squad where I don't think we really do have a decent backup. Pacheco at halfback would be one of those. Ideally, I think Pacheco would be your backup, and we would have a much stronger player in that position was not able to find one during the transfer window. We are into the highlights, though. The game has been quite uneventful so far. We're halfway through the first period, and our opponents have got the ball, and they're going to build from the back. They've launched it long. 
can we deal with it comfortably? Escobar, who's injured one of his teammates in training this week, by the way, which was incredibly helpful. Our young striker, McComb, who we're hoping to develop this season, is going to be out for seven weeks after Escobar clobbered him. So he's got some making up to do in his performance at left back tonight. We've got Milanese. He's played the ball through. It's the old stager Rossi who spanks it straight at the keeper. And we've won a corner. And Lander is not on the pitch to take it. So Gustavo will be in charge. But we know that Lander waits ominously on the bench. The Bromby bench must be petrified just looking over and seeing the great one there. Every time he warms up, I would imagine the Bromby fans are applauding him, never mind our own fans who have travelled out to Denmark, who, looking around the stadium, seem to be few in numbers because it is yellow and blue that I can see all around the stands. We're into the highlights again. We've got 15 minutes to half time. Escobar's on the ball. Kula Bali, who, with Ndaba injured, it's going to be getting some game time at the start of this season. We've worked the ball through. Rossi's in again. And he's missed another decent chance. Two misses for Rossi. Hopefully, if he gets a third, he will put it away. By the way, Tyrese John Jules looked great on his debut against Valladolid. A goal with a very composed finish and an assist as well was a great start for him. See if he can get on the score sheet tonight. Rossi's done some great work winning the ball back for us. Pacheco's gone over the top as only Sylvester Stallone would sanction. But unfortunately, we cannot get on the ball. Bromby are playing very direct. We've won it in the air. Milanese has fired a ball forward. It's bounced back to him. And here is Danny's boy, John Jules. He's got it over to Rosanas up from right back. Could we get a goal on the stroke of half time? We've got it to Rosa. He's had a little effort. Was it saved? Has it hit the bar? I think we've clipped the woodwork. And a pretty even first half finishes nil-nil. We're ahead on the XG. I think that's those two chances for Rossi that he spurned. Let's go and tell the boys we're going to need a little bit more in the second period. So I think we looked pretty controlled in that first half. So I've made a big call. I've upped it to the full Samantha Mumba. So the fullbacks have become wingbacks. And we're going positive for this second half. Just to try and get a goal that will give us an advantage going into the second leg. Here is Tyrese. He's been a bit greedy there. I thought he would pull it back to Rossi. Instead he's had an effort from a very obscure angle. Could have got us off to the perfect start at the beginning of the half. Alas, we've got more work to do. We've tried to just dab a little effort through to Rossi. He's not quick enough these days to get onto those. But I don't think that's the highlight. Instead, the highlight could well be for Bromby. They've got in behind us twice. And they've struck the woodwork now. We've cleaned it up and got it away. That was a clumsy little period, maybe. We need to go back to the Samantha Mumba 2.0. Maybe I've got a little bit too confident after our first half performance. They're in again. They're going to have a header on goal. Barossi is up and claims it. We've not started this second period that well. I think it's time for us to think about some changes. Tired legs. All these players played at the weekend. We're going into 60 minutes played. And it's highlights again. Barossi's having a good think. He's given the ball to Koulibaly. A good choice, and we got it to Rosa, who's been booked. Could be a player to make way. We want to see Lander in Europe, don't we? Let's be honest. That's the only reason any of us have travelled out to Denmark. To see a player who was once striding around in the Spanish fourth tier. And by the way, when we signed him, the Spanish fourth tier was a new high level for Lander. He's now playing European footballs. Tyrese is in. We're looking for the flag. I think the referee is unmoved. I think we might have got a goal here. He looked offside. I don't think they're even having a look at it. It counts. Who's got the assist? Rossi is raiding down the left. He's got the ball to Diego Rosa. He's dug out a cross. Tyrese peels off his man. And we are 1-0 in the lead. It's time for a change. Maybe two. 
This is looking good so far. So brace yourselves, everybody. It is happening. Lander is coming on. A player who was knocking around the Spanish fifth tier before we bought him in. And he has been a hero for us in the fourth tier. And again in the third tier. And, well, all right, not that great in the second tier. And, well, distinctly average in the top flight. But he is a living legend. He's a club legend. And he's coming on for young Gustavo to try and play the last half an hour for us out in Denmark. We'll get the game back underway. We've made another change as well. We've brought in Muller to play as centre-back. And we've moved Simao over to right-back because Rosanus was looking tired and playing poorly as well. We've bounced on to 72 minutes. And we've given the ball away horrifically there. Have we just given away a terrible goal? We have. Who is responsible for that little howler? Was it Koulibaly? I feel like the highlight came in really early. We've got a free kick. Koulibaly has kicked it directly to a Bromby player. Why is Barossi not taking the kick first of all? And that is a mix-up of epic proportions. And I was about to pause and make our final substitute. But what are we here? 27, 28 yards from goal. And the great man is on it. Shall we watch him curl it into the top corner before we make another change? I think we should treat ourselves. Up he comes. And that was a great free kick. But clearly the referee had not got the wall far enough back. And now we will make our change. That was going in the top corner. The referee should be ashamed of themselves. Who are we going to take off? I think Rossi could be our man for this. He's missed two good chances. And on the break, maybe if we bring on Jordi Ambula, his pace might be able to do a little bit for us. We're going to throw out a shout. We're going to demand more. 1-1 one, one is not a disaster. We could grab an extra goal. It would put us in the box seat. 88 minutes. It doesn't look like it's going to come. If anything, we could be about to go 2-1 down. Bromby have got the ball into the box. They've peeled off. Barossi looks solid. Maybe that wasn't the highlight. Are we going to build up play again? Be careful giving it to Koulibaly. Correct. Give it to young Muller this time. We've got it with Samal. We're going back to Muller. We've got the ball into midfield. Here's the great one. Look at him. That was a delicious ball. Our strikers clearly didn't read it. Otherwise, we'd have been in on goal again. And none of this is Lander's fault. But we are looking to try and see out another Bromby counter. They've got the ball. They've struck the post. They've tucked it away. And clearly, you're not blaming Lander in that situation. He did the right thing playing that lumped ball forward but it was done with guile it was done with precision and our strike force are not good enough to be on the same level as him and it's cost us and my tactical tweaks have cost us at half time i've gone from the samantha mumba 2.0 to the regular samantha mumba and it has cost us umbula is in though and he has got us back level it's an instant riposte at least we look like we might be tying the game up. And you know what? On 90 minutes, this is straight from the kickoff, by the way. On 90 minutes, I think we might just go down to the regular Samantha Mumba. Tyrese John Jules plays the ball through. What you won't have seen is that Lander had been working with Tyrese all week in training, just showing him how to play that ball. Lander. On a 6.7, that's a mistake for starters. Let's get down to the Samantha Mumba 2.0 and try and see this game out. And we're also going to throw on the merest Susan of time wasting. And let's take this tie all the way to the full time whistle with it in the balance for the second leg. We're on 95 minutes. Time should be up. This should be the highlight where the referee ends the game. We were at 22 seconds over the added on time. We're in possession of the ball. We've seen it out. And it is all in the balance. So I guess we know which game we are coming back for. It's going to be the second leg against Bromby. I've had a little look at the rules. 
In fact, I'm not happy with that performance. I thought it was a little bit woolly around the edges. I've had a look at the rules, and I think, from what I can see, the winner of this tie between us and Bromby will be going into the group stages of the Conference League. I can't see that there's any more qualifiers to play after this. So this game that we're coming back for could be a biggie. It wouldn't be the first time that I've misread the rules. There could be eight more qualifiers to go. But I think when we come back for our next episode, we'll be taking on Bromby for a chance to enter the group stages of European competition in Beg, Borrow, Steel.